Today we are standing in what is one out of 14 sites where this field experiment is planted in the state of Kansas during the 2022 uh, winter wheat growing season. So all that you see here, all these white flags, they are part of an experiment that we call intensive wheat management. And it is an experiment that is funded by the Kansas Wheat Commission, the Association of Wheat Growers here in Kansas, right? Uh, and, and they fund this experiment. Essentially what we're doing here is we are replicating management practices that we learned from growers that they are doing in their own commercial fields. So for example, here in these first two plots that we have in the beginning of the experiment, um, we have management practices that were adopted by low yielding growers in the state of Kansas, right? And so here, for example, we have a limited seeding rate. We don't have any starter fertilizer. Uh, we have nitrogen rates that are actually shooting for a relatively low yield goal according to those uh, low yielding growers that we interviewed in Kansas. Now, as we move up here, we are progressively increasing the intensification with which we are managing the crop. So these next two plots here, they are two different varieties. So we always have the same management across different varieties, right? So here we have two different winter wheat varieties. We, and here we're trying to replicate what the average grower is doing in Kansas, right? So we're going from a low yielding grower, the combination of practices that they are adopting in their fields. We're going to the average grower here in Kansas, right? You can see differences already, right? Uh, where we have increased seeding rates. We, we still don't have any infuro fertilizer here, but we have higher nitrogen rates as well. Um, and so progressively we increase our management intensification to the very same two varieties, but now replicating what high yielding growers are doing around the state. So you can see higher population. We also have the use of starter fertilizer. Uh, we have higher nitrogen rates. We're actually adding some sulfur here. We're gonna come back with a foliar fungicide, apply that flag leaf. Now, if we move down another two plots, what we will see there is the highest yielding growers in the state of Kansas. What are they doing in their fields, right? So again, we have even higher seeding rates, higher fertility at planting, higher levels of nitrogen and sulfur, and even some addition of chloride, some early foliar fungicides and micronutrients, and later foliar fungicides as well. So we have a range that is representative from the lowest 20% yielding growers to the average, to the highest, the 20% yielding growers all the way to the top 5% yielding growers and what they are doing across the state. And again, we're very excited with this project. Last year in 2021, we were able to do this project in about 12 locations across the state. We saw a very consistent yield bump of about 13 bushels per, per acre going from the low to the average and another 13 to 14 bushels per acre growing to the average to the high. Now, interestingly, we didn't see much yield gain from the high to the top. Uh, however, we're now looking at quality attributes. So even though we didn't see a new gain, I'm, we're curious to see if we're going to see any positive milling and baking quality gains from the high yielding growers to the top yielding growers. So that's our wheat intensification uh, project in collaboration with the Kansas Wheat Commission and with uh, Lucas Hag and, and John Holman out in Western Kansas as well. Uh, and for any more questions, growers are, are welcome to reach out to me at KSU Wheat on Twitter or Facebook.